I am using my trusty solder iron for around 5 years. This is a 25 watt iron with no temperature control and other fancy features. Just plug it in on the AC outlet and it starts to heat up. Of course, it can provide a sufficient temperature for most of the scenarios. But it has quite a few disadvantages. It can't heat up quickly, no temperature control, no slip function and sometimes it can't provide sufficient heat to melt bigger solder joints. To solve this problem, I got myself this soldering station from OSS team, model number T12X, which is obviously more powerful and has lots of awesome features that should be pretty handy for a hobbyist. Simply this is the Chinese copy version of the Heco 912 soldering station. Because of that, it's pretty cheap and can be affordable for everyone. So in this video, I will properly test this soldering station understand its features and functionalities, perform some tests and finally we will decide should this product worth the money. Let's find it out. This is the simple packaging of this equipment. No security seal, nothing. On the box, they mentioned some of the key specs which are mostly written in Chinese. So we don't care about that much. After opening the package, we got a bill for this product and these two boxes. After opening one of them, I got this T12 tip, a small package and the main unit. The T12 iron tip is provided by the manufacturer. This package consists of a handle of the iron, the grounding wire, copper tip cleaner, cleaning sponge and soldering mat. On the second box, first I got all my other iron tips which I ordered with this soldering station. Then I found the power cord two handle grips and most importantly the stand. That's it. No user manual, no warranty card and no paperwork. The main unit is completely built out of metal. On the front, the far left one is the connector to connect our soldering iron. This is a 1.44 inch LCD display for interfacing and this is a rotary encoder to control everything. It can be pushed or rotatable. On the back side, we got a binding post to connect the ground wire, an AC socket, fuse and an AC switch. The build quality actually is pretty solid here. They also provided bumpers underneath the housing to prevent it from slipping. The ground wire I have mentioned earlier can be used to protect your circuits from the ESD when you are working on them. Also, the soldering tip is properly grounded inside the soldering station through a high value resistor. So the iron is ESD safe. But sadly, it is actually not connected to the earth ground because of this AC plug they provided. In India, our outlet standard is different. So that not only the binding post is floating, but also the iron tip body. Now the iron is not ESD safe anymore. If you change the wire with proper grounded one, then you can use this feature. To use this soldering station, I started to put the copper tip cleaner into its cavity and the tip cleaning sponge on its place. Then I untie the wire of the handle and put the T12 tip inside it. Keep pushing the element until it's stuck and can't be pushed in. Ok, moving on. To connect the soldering iron with its controller brain, I have to have this plug. This plug enters into the socket, tied the screw and we are done. Please be careful with the orientation of the connector. It is not a reversible one. This plug also has a notch for the orientation indication. After connecting the AC plug to the socket, putting the other end into the AC outlet, I turned on the outlet switch and the soldering station switch respectively. That's it. The soldering station turns on with this small animation and it starts to heat up the element until the set temperature is reached. This set temperature value can be controlled by this rotary encoder by rotating it clockwise or anticlockwise. The set temperature will be increased by rotating it clockwise and can be decreased by rotating it anticlockwise. By pressing the button inside the rotary encoder, you can activate the boost that can by default increases the temperature 50 degrees. You can remove the boost by tapping it another time. By double tapping it, you can access these shortcuts. By rotating this knob, you can toggle between them. 
Of course, those temperatures are not fixed values. You can create your customized presets temperature between 80 to 480, wherever you want. And yes, these temperatures are all in degree Celsius. So the iron is very hot. Now, please be careful. By pressing and holding the switch of the rotary encoder, you can access the settings of the soldering station. There are actually lots of settings you can play with. Start with the calibration. I recommend you not to touch it. Number 2 is shortcut temp. Here you can configure the 3 shortcuts which I showed you before. To select this menu, press the button one time and you get the 3 options. First, second and third. The first option is automatically selected. You can change it by rotating the knob. To select the next option, just push the rotary encoder. Now the second option is selected. Similarly, you can do this with the third one. To go to the main menu, just double tap the rotary encoder. Third option we get here is Auto Ideal, which automatically down the element temperature at the safe level after a certain time. You can set both the time and temperature from this menu. Next, Auto Sleep. It is pretty handy feature and every soldering iron should have. Basically, what it does, when you are not using your iron, it is on rest, the iron automatically put into sleep mode and it will automatically awaken by lifting it from the stand and shaking it a bit. You can adjust the time when the sleep mode will activate and how the iron is taken out from the sleep mode. By default, it is handle. They actually use a motion sensor inside the handle to detect the movement. It is important to say that to use the sleep function, you have to set the auto ideal mode first. And it is necessary that auto sleep and auto ideal set timer should at least be the same. If the sleep timer is set less than the ideal, then the iron will not sleep. If the sleep timer is greater than the ideal time, then it's okay. Just take an example to understand it. I set the auto ideal time on 1 minute. And also the auto sleep time is set on 1 minute. When iron isn't in use, then after first 1 minute, the ideal mode will be activated and after next 1 minute, the sleep mode will be activated. So sleep mode will be activated after 2 minutes. The next option we get here is temp boost. Here you can adjust how much temperature boost the iron puts into the set temperature after a single push. Also you can set here how long the boost remains activated. The last important option you get is temp step which can adjust how much temperature increases on every step of the rotary encoder. By default it is on 10 degrees. In this menu you also find some more options which are self explanatory. Like language, you can switch between two languages, English and Chinese. Next, sound switch, yeah, whatever you do with the rotary encoder, this machine produces a beep sound. You can on and off that from here. After that, we get factory set that reset all the settings you set on this soldering station. In the end, we get system info. From here, you can check the hardware and software version of this station. And finally, exit which can help you to exit from this menu. Also, by pressing and holding the rotary encoder, you can get out from the menu. By the way, this is a 72 watt soldering iron, works anywhere between 90 to 230 volt AC, if you are curious. So, it's pretty powerful. Let's see its performance. I set the temperature on 350 degrees, which it achieved in a couple of seconds. Then I started with the inbox tip to solder tiny points, which it did without any issue. Also, it can efficiently melt and hold the solder on its tip. So soldering on small joints is definitely possible. Let's check some desoldering on some heavy joints. But this time I used the T12KU tip. The set temperature is still 350 degrees Celsius and apparently it still does its job fine. Solder joints are still melting flawlessly. So I take the desoldering pump to remove the solder to take out the components. Easy peasy. Next I tried a bit big point. The component I tried to remove is the diode. Normally desoldering the high power diodes 
most of the time is a bit difficult. But this soldering station and my trusty desoldering pump do their job just fine. Finally, to kick it up a notch, I tried this big soldering joint to mate. This is not a solder joint I would say. It is a huge amount of solder packed in a small area which I tried to melt, which it did in a couple of seconds in 350 degrees Celsius. But this type of heavy solder joints loads the element so much as it shows on the display. Of course, this kind of performance increases the curiosity of an electronics enthusiast to reverse engineer the design. So I tear it apart to see the inside. After unscrewing the front and back panel, it is very easy to completely disassemble the enclosure. This board right here is just a power supply board that can produce 24V. This section however is the brain of the soldering station. This is the main microcontroller that can take input from the rotary encoder and from the thermocouple placed inside the soldering tip. The microcontroller processes it and provides the output which in this case is the heating element of the tip. Yes, the heating resistor is in series with the thermocouple inside. So apart from this grounded body of this tip, it has two main terminals, positive and negative. More about the element later on another video. This component however is a buck converter IC that reduces the 24V to 5V for the microcontroller. This is the MOSFET that drives the high voltage side which operates the heating element. And this is the display. There are also some passive components like resistors and capacitors in this circuit. So in a conclusion, this product is definitely worth the money. It has lots of features to explore. Lots of functionalities that can be pretty useful for a hobbyist. But this is a Chinese copy. So there is no warranty or guarantee from the manufacturer. If the seller provides any kind of warranty or guarantee, then you get it. Also the quality of this wire of the handle is not much considerable because of its average build quality. But it will do by looking at the price point of course. In the end, it should be said, yeah, Chinese copies are great as long as they work. But if it fails, you have nothing to do. The components they used are very difficult to find. So it is very hard to replace if they fail. Another thing I would like about this station is its low cost iron tips, which also can be replaced according to your needs. And most importantly, I can use this tip to make my own DIY version of this soldering station. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this small review. If so, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe and please hit the notification bell for future updates. Thank you so much.